Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and uh, today I have brought another problem from Pathfinder for all of you. It was requested by one of my students who was facing some difficulty in this. This is uh, Pathfinder. Uh, check your understanding problem 20 from a chapter on impulse and momentum methods. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the problem. So here's the problem. So two small discs A and B of masses M1 and M2 connected by light inextensible uh, thread of length L are placed on a frictionless horizontal floor. Okay, so there must be two discs and they're connected by thread of length L and they're placed on a frictionless horizontal floor. Okay, the disc A is held at rest and disc B is projected to move around the disc A. So maybe this is disc A and there's some disc B which is projected to move around disc A with a constant speed U on a circular path. Okay, so it's supposed to be moving with constant speed with about disc A. Okay. <coughs> If the disc A is now released, the disc B will move on a path as shown in the figure. So what's given that disc B is going like this, somewhat like this, okay. So this kind of, it's continuing this path, okay. So now we have to answer some questions. What's the first question? Which disc has more mass? That's the first question. Second is find the suitable expressions for the step lengths P and Q. So we have to find this uh, distance P as well as this distance Q. So these are the things that we need to find out, okay. So if you want, you can give it a try. I'll get get into my solution right away. Okay, let's look at the analysis. Okay, so a few things I've calculated uh, and then uh, we'll see what we can do with that. So first of all, I've calculated the velocity of center of mass. See, uh, this is M2. Let us say M2 is going with you. This, this was mass B, which was uh, projected with you. So its velocity is M2 U. I mean, it's uh, the velocity of center of mass will be m2 u divided by m1 plus m2, okay, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2, right. So, this is the velocity of center of mass and what is the angular velocity of the system? See, the whole system will be moving in a circular motion about the uh, center of mass. So, uh, as well, you might as well think of it like a rigid body rotating, okay, and whenever a rigid body is rotating, the omega of the system is same, okay. And what is omega? So, omega of uh, b about uh, a is same as omega of b about the center of mass which is same as omega of a about uh, center of mass okay so that's we can call it as omega of the system so since this speed is u and this distance is l so angular velocity and instantaneous velocity of a at initial moment is zero so omega is simply u divided by l okay so we have found omega and we have found velocity of center of mass okay now the discs will follow a circular path about CM while CM will go in a straight line. Obviously, there's no external force, so center of mass must move, move in a straight line. And from center of mass frame, because it's an inertial frame, so uh, uh, there's uh, no torque or anything, so they'll, the blocks will be going in a uh, constant angular velocity about the center of mass, right? And what else we can say? For a self-intersecting path, velocity reversal must take place. You see? This path is a self-intersecting path, right? So you can see when it is intersecting itself, that means what velocity was backward for some time and then there is forward velocity. So what can you say? If the velocity is backward also and forward also, that means what? The velocity of the uh, disc uh, that, that's following this path relative to center of mass must be greater than velocity of center of mass itself. Then only the resultant can be backward because if this vector is larger and this vector is smaller, then only the resultant can be backward as well as forward. So you, you can see the velocity of this disk is uh, forward also and here it's the velocity is backward also. That means what? Velocity of the disk relative to center of mass must be greater than the velocity of center of mass itself because uh, velocity of the disk in ground frame is what? That's velocity of center of mass plus velocity of the disk as seen from center of mass. So that's what I've written. Okay, for a self-intersecting path, velocity reversal must take place. Okay, this will happen if the velocity relative to center of mass is greater than velocity of center of mass itself, right? So what's the velocity relative to center of mass for this disk? So suppose this is going with u. So velocity relative to center of mass is u minus vcm, right? So u minus vcm must be greater than vcm. Okay, or we can say u must be greater than 2 vcm. Now vcm I've already found, so I can substitute for vcm here. So what do I get? U must be greater than m2 u upon m1 plus m2 into 2. So you cancel off u and you take this there and you can see that m1 plus m2 must be greater than 2 m2. Or we can say m1 must be greater than m2, right? So that means what? Uh, this mass of disk A is greater than mass of disk B, okay? The disk B is the lighter one, okay? 
okay so that was the first part of the question that which disc is the heavier or lighter so we have commented on that okay now let's try to calculate the value of p see it can be readily seen from the figure that p is the distance advanced by center of mass during one complete cycle of m2 about center of mass see uh, you see if the if you look at the periodic nature of this path see uh, suppose we start counting from here so we start the cycle from here and we come back here and then here the cycle is completed right so and from we started from this point and we ended from this point and again you can see the same cycle is going to be repeated so this is nothing but the distance advanced by the center of mass in one complete cycle in fact after one complete cycle, the same configuration repeats. So you can as well call it distance moved by A or B or center of mass. All of them have advanced by the same amount. And this, that's why the same configuration is repeated and another fresh cycle is starting, right? So that means what? So this distance P is the distance advanced by center of mass during one complete cycle of M2 about CM or of the system itself, you can say. So P must be what? That should be velocity of center of mass into the time period of the cycle. That is 2 pi by omega, right? So VCM we had found that was M2U upon M1 plus M2 and the time period is uh, 2 pi by omega and omega was U by L, right? So if uh, if you just put in uh, this uh, as L by U by L, so what do you get? So U cancels with U and you are left with this as the value of P. So fairly simple calculation of P. And now comes the uh, uh, bulwark part mathematically. I mean, uh, math physics of this is not very difficult, but a little bit of math you have to do, a little bit of bashing. So let's see, calculating the value of Q. So what I can do uh, without loss of generality, I can start my clock anywhere. So let's say I start my clock when uh, this mass is over here and it's going to uh, reverse its direction. It's the point of a reversal backward. Okay. And then it will go like this. Okay. And uh, sometime in past, it must have been... Uh, uh, at the extremity DC, uh, the width Q I have marked as D and D. E. So uh, you can see this is symmetric. So from lowest point to horizontal distance up to D, if I can find out that displacement must be minus Q by 2. Why? Because this width is Q and uh, if I take forward direction is positive. So displacement from lowest point to D is actually this distance. This distance, let me clear up things. So this distance is minus Q by 2, right? Because of symmetry. Okay. So I'll try to estimate this. I'll try to express this. And another thing you can see is uh, what's the so special about point D. You see at point D, the velocity is vertical. So horizontal component of velocity at point D is zero. So I can easily find out the time uh, at which this event occurs by equating the horizontal component of velocity to zero. So that's what I'm going to do. And once I have the time, then I can simply integrate the velocity to get this uh, distance, right? So. I'll find out the time and then I'll integrate the velocity uh, with time to get the value of minus Q by 2 and then of course you can, if you know minus Q by 2, you know Q, right? So without loss of generality, let us assume the shown configuration to be T equal to 0, this configuration, okay? Uh, M2 is the one which is following this path, okay? Now when the particle reaches capital D, the horizontal velocity of the particle is 0 and horizontal displacement is minus Q by 2, okay? Fair enough. So let's that let the time to reach capital D be uh, capital T. So, so from here to here, let's say this time is capital T. Okay. Now, what is the velocity of center of mass? Uh, let's say this distance is R2 from center of mass to this vertical distance. This is let us say distance of this M2 from center of mass is R2. So, of course, what's the value of R2? You know that uh, this R2 R2 will be. I mean, uh, the center of mass divides the uh, masses in the inverse ratio of masses, right? So this distance should be equal to what m1 m1 l upon m1 plus m2 that's the value of r2 okay and so about center of mass this is going in a circle of radius r2 so that's what i've shown is going in a circle of radius r2 so its velocity related to center of mass at general time t will be what so it would have rotated through an angle omega t and this velocity is omega r2 right and its horizontal component will be what this again is omega t so omega r2 cos theta is its horizontal velocity in the reverse direction and VCM is the velocity of center of mass in the forward direction. So what's its net horizontal velocity? So that's what I've written. Uh, okay. And at this instant, the center of mass horizontal velocity must be exactly cancelled by the horizontal velocity of the uh, this uh, M2 relative to center of mass. So that's why I've written what? VCM must be equal to omega R2 cos of omega T. Why? Because this is omega R2 and this is omega T angle. And this is omega R2. So backward velocity is omega R2 cos of omega T. So that explains equation 6 and now uh, 
uh, if you see uh, everything is known here r2 is known omega is known vcm is known so you can say that we know the value of capital t and once i know the value of capital t i can simply integrate this so i can say minus q by 2 that's the displacement from uh, uh, here to here this distance is equal to uh, vcm minus omega r2 cos of omega t that's the velocity because vcm is the, this forward velocity of center and this horizontal velocity of this in the backward direction is omega r2 cos of omega t so that's why vcm minus omega r2 cos of omega t dt from 0 to capital t i need to do okay and r2 as i told you r2 uh, will be the in, in the inverse ratio of the masses uh, it will divide the distance between them in the inverse ratio of masses so r2 is simply m1 l upon m1 plus m2 right so uh, distance uh, from the smaller mass is large and from larger masses of uh, is small so this is r2 okay now substituting from for vcm from equation 1 omega from 2 and capital t from 6 and r2 from 8 see i'll show you all these equations once again so vcm and omega from equations 1 and 2 see uh, i found them already see this is vcm and this is omega from equation 1 and 2 and then i got something from equation 6 what was that that was capital T from equation 6 and R2 from equation 8. So I can just substitute everything here. Everything else is known and uh, uh, I also know capital T from equation 6. So just substitute and then you integrate. So if you solve that, this is what you get for the value of Q. Uh, I have cut short the uh, bulwark part but there is uh, some bulwark over here. But uh, I hope the roadmap is clear. So if you substitute that, you get this as the final answer. So that's my final answer and it matches with the book so we can be happy and that's the end of uh, my analysis. I hope you people enjoyed the analysis of uh, this problem and if you did enjoy the analysis please uh, give a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible through WhatsApp, Discord, Telegram, whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students who are preparing for JE or Olympiads and uh, most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you